Hey guys, it's Jonathan here with Checks Vans. Today is an amazing day. After over a year of lots of labor and love and sweat and tears, we brought our first van to market. Going into this venture, we bought three vans, a 144 Mercedes Sprinter, a 170 Mercedes Sprinter, and a 170 Extended Mercedes Sprinter. We're huge outdoor enthusiasts. We bought these three vans to build them and bring the kinds of vans that we'd want to market. Today, we're gonna introduce the very first build we've completed. It's a sleep to, drive to, based on the 170 chassis with a fixed bed design. Uh, really excited to walk you through this. So starting with the outside of the van, first and foremost, we wanted to build this van to be four season and fully off grid. So we'll talk about the solar, the different ways to power, the water tanks, but first and foremost, wheels and suspension upgrades we thought were critical. This is a stage three suspension upgrade with the black, upgraded black Rhino wheels and tires. So this is gonna give you the ability to go up into the mountains, go out on the beach, and, and having a solid uh, suspension foundation as you travel around. Now as we walk through the van, other than these upgraded uh, custom windows that were put in, the most significant piece to talk about are flare space. So we went with flare space windows for two reasons. We wanted the ability to give customers the option to sleep side to side. So this allowed 6'1", 6'2", sort of height person to be able to sleep side to side. All right, so let's talk about the shore power. One of the design goals here was to make these vans as stealth as possible. We dropped the shore power down a little bit lower, used a smart plug 30 amp plug, and this allows you to plug in at an RV pedestal at a campground. You have an easy way to go ahead and plug in and charge your uh, house battery bank. When we bought this van, brand new, it's a 2021, uh, it came with the factory installed step and tow hitch. It allows you a little more flexibility and utilize one of those cargo racks that it connects into your hitch. We wanted to provide easy access to the roof and give you a spare uh, upgraded tire as you're off-roading. So this is an owl van tire and ladder kit. Gives you easy access to the roof. Now we're at the uh, uh, driver's side of the van. Uh, one thing to point out, uh, again, we went with two flare spaces in this van. Some vans use, utilize the flare space on only one side. We decided we wanna maximize the width of this van to increase your living space. This is our water inlet. Very easy to plug your garden hose in here has a built-in filter, and this feeds a 27-gallon water tank that is installed underneath the van. Uh, we got the water tank from RB Components. They make a custom 27-gallon water tank that fits in the tire rack that comes with this van from factory, and they're thermostat controlled. So when the weather drops before freezing, the heating pad will kick on and prevent your water from freezing. Right under this window here on the driver's side, is a 25 gallon gray water tank. They can hit a button inside, the motorized ball valve will automatically open, will drain your tank, and then when your tank is empty, you hit the button again, the motorized ball valve closes, and you're all set to go. All right, so I'm at the top of the roof here. A couple of things I wanted to point out. We built a roof rack based on 8020 extruded aluminum. On the rear here, we have two switch controlled from the inside of the van, liquid force uh, halogen lights that will put out a lot of light in the back of the van if you're reversing. We went with an RTX 2000 12 volt AC unit, low profile, highly aerodynamic. We also went with a WeBoost cell boost monitor. We also have three Renogy 100 watt solar panels up here. So again, now that's your second uh, opportunity to power your house battery bank. We talked about shore power. The second is solar. All right, everybody, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Super excited, anxious, and eager to show you the inside of the van. So let's jump in. All right, so here we are on the inside of the van. When we thought about the design of this van, we thought about potential full-time living. So you know, we, everything we built on this van is to be all season, all weather, uh, and figured for a sleep to, drive to configuration, this would be a van likely uh, suitable for folks that wanna spend a lot of time in here. Farmhouse sink, butcher block countertops, nice tile backsplashes, and a very bright uh, color scheme here. So some of the components of the kitchen, definitely wanted to have a microwave. So we have a full microwave here. Uh, nice big fridge with freezer, your water. We have GFI outlets. We have two light switches, one that controls the kitchen lights on and off, and one that will control the LED lights that I showed you on the roof at the back of the van. 
We have one drawer here that's deep and one larger drawer, again, for some pots, pans, or whatever you think you might want. These are all soft closed doors. We also wanted to install a plug back in this cabinet. So if you had cameras, cell phones, anything that you wanted to kind of just place up here and power on, you'd be able to do that. We have four speakers installed in this van, one here up at the front of the van, one on the outside butcher block, and two that you'll see behind me in the door. So this gives you a nice sound system in here. Th these speakers are controlled by a Bluetooth enabled amp that I'll show you in the back of the van. So you can stream music right from your phone to these speakers, or there's ports that you can plug in, plug in HDMI or an aux cord. You have four sets of drawers here of varying sizes. All these drawers are lined with a cork liner to give you some additional protection and to minimize noise. Continuing back, we tried to maximize the hallway space in this van. It makes it a little easier to buy, to pass one another should you need to going from front to back. This is a full shower. There's two light switches here. One of the light switches controls the vent fan in our nature's head toilet. And the other switch controls the light that's installed inside of the shower area itself. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the shower. This is a project we were super excited to see how it turned out. It's a 24 uh, inch by 36 inch stainless steel shower floor with a four inch wall. These, uh, the teak floor that you see down here is comprised of two separate pieces. So you can remove these pieces Take them outside when you wanna utilize the outdoor shower. Uh, this is a nature's head composting toilet with a built-in electric vent fan. And this can be very easily removed with these dials on each side. As we work up, we have racks here for uh, body wash, shampoo, and conditioner. A Delta magnetic shower head. We have a uh, waterproof toilet paper cover. And finally, the door. We went with a Nautilus self-cleaning retractable door. So we found these really nice hooks that will flip up when you're not using them and stay out of your way as you're walking through the aisle. And then if you wanna use them to hang a robe or to hang a towel as you're utilizing the shower, they're there for you to be able to do that as well. This is a dinette. This lagoon table gives you all kinds of options. You can also very easily raise the table. If you raise the table, you can use it as a additional surface area if you're cooking or prepping. Fully adjustable here. We've installed a plug in the dinette with built-in USB ports. Work on your laptop or this way or, or what have you. And you'll notice that we went ahead and, and stained and protected these pieces of shiplap. All of these windows are slide open windows with screen. All these windows have custom-made magnetic covers to allow you full privacy. We created these storage bins inside both seats. When you put this bed back in, it'll push down and lock in. And now you don't have to worry about it moving around as you drive down the road. This is a two-level spice rack. We also wanted to put a little fun thing here, and it's a magnet. Um, so you can draw little notes or to-dos for the day. So I wanna briefly describe here what we have in, in this instrument panel. The left gauge is our gray water tank. It tells you how full your gray water is. The center one is our fresh water tank, which is currently at a half full. And then we have a Victron BMS or battery monitor system, which tells us that we're currently running at 13.5 volts. The last two switches, the one on the right, is the heating pad for our fresh water tank. And the one on the left is the motorized ball valve for your gray water. All right, so I'm gonna hop up here and then we'll show you a little bit of what we did in the bedroom. I'm about 5'9", so plenty of headroom, plenty of feet. We have 12 volt reading lights, windows in each of the flare spaces so you can maximize your ventilation, the speakers, and then to make sure you're comfortable in hot weather, again, this is the Dometic 12 volt RTX 2000 air conditioner. But we wanted to provide our customers with two switches. The last thing you wanna do is walk into your van, turn your hallway lights on, lay in bed and then realize, oh, I didn't want those lights. So this black switch is a three-way switch. It allows you to control your hallway lights either from the bedroom or as you're leaving the van. Above it here is our S-Bar heater. Many water heaters run uh, on 110 volt. They do not run on 12 volt. So what we wanted to do is make sure that if you wanted hot water, that you could time how long you're gonna need that hot water. Right next to the water heater uh, control unit is your water pump. 
We wanted our customers to have direct access to the entire rear of the uh, shower hookup system there. All right, so we're making our way back to the front of the van. So here's our Max Air fan. This is a dual direction fan. It will either pull air in, or if you're showering or cooking, you have a lot of steam, it'll pull air out. It's also got a built-in rain sensor so that if it starts to rain and you've forgotten to close the hood, the fan will automatically close the hood for you. Right here, you'll see a vent behind the uh, passenger seat. That is where your S-Bar heater heat gets generated. So from the control unit that I just showed you in the bedroom area, you can turn your heat on. This is a blackout screen from Van Wife, fully magnetic, so you can kind of tie your shades and, and you know kind of move them off to the side when they're not in use. And then it, in the evening or whenever you want complete privacy, untie them, they'll magnetic together. A uh, lot of storage up here. This is an aftermarket headliner. The van comes complete with custom window shades. We want to keep the living space of the van completely separate from the actual van itself. So the AC is in the ceiling separate from your van. Uh, the heat is in the passenger seat separate. Your house battery bank, which controls all your lights and all your mechanicals, separate from the van. The only component that's integrated, which is the third power source I mentioned, is alternator charging. So when you do run your van, when you do drive down the road and start your engine, uh, you have an option with an on-off switch of deciding whether or not you want the alternator and the engine of this van to be powering uh, your battery bank in the rear. And we'll show you the garage here next. Last thing I wanted to kind of outline here about the front of the van is a swivel seat to just open up the van, give a place for someone else to sit. So all you have to do is kind of pull this switch and turn and swivel yourself around. And now you've got space. You can look outside, just relax here and enjoy yourself. And it opens up the van a bit more and gives you a bit more living space. That kind of wraps up the interior tour. As I'm heading out, I wanted to just emphasize again, three-way switch. So if I want to turn the lights out uh, in the hallway from here instead of the bedroom, I can do that. I also have plugs here for your, with built-in USB in case you're tailgating and your speaker facing the outside of the van. So with that, we're gonna close this up and I'm gonna take you to the garage. All right, so now let's take a look at the garage. We're really excited about showing you both the power uh, bank that we created as well as the entire water system. We wanted to create an outdoor shower. Went with this very simplistic push-in turn dial uh, solution. So nice outdoor shower option there. Floor is all lined with that same kind of marine grade uh, gator step kind of sun deck material. So it's easy to wash, easy to clean. We wanted to make this a four season full off grid van. So we spared no expense either on the water components with the water heater and accumulator and the pump, but also on the battery complex. So this van has 500 amp hours of Battleborn battery. Uh, we have a uh, Victron MPPT 130 solar charge controller, so you can grab power from the solar panels. We have a Renogy 60 amp DC to DC alternator charger. So as you're driving down the road with an on-off switch, you can control and dictate whether or not you want the alternator to be helping to keep your battery banks charged. And of course, we have shore power, which we showed you earlier. In addition, we have a Victron uh, MultiPlus 3000 watt AC to DC inverter. So this 3000 watt inverter will allow you to convert the 12 volt power that's coming from your battery bank into 110 volt AC. All of this is protected using two fuse panels. We have a DC fuse panel, and then we have a separate AC fuse panel with breakers controlling all aspects of the van, including you know dedicated circuit to your water heater. All this comes into a Victron Lynx distributor and it, there's also a manual uh, on-off master uh, control in the backside wall of the battery bank. This entire battery complex can be controlled through a Victron app. It shows you the components of your system so everything looks nice and healthy and all this can be monitored and controlled through the Victron app.